Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Two Make Turn. We are back once again with another episode for y'all. Um, I am aware that it has been a couple weeks. We will explain why in a second. But, uh, Steven, you seem to be pretty uh, not changed, or <laughs> if I decide to change in the future, you look weird. Can you explain your uh, yeah. situation? So, you guys may notice that I am once again uh, without a video feed. It's for an entirely different reason this time than last time. Uh, last time it was because of uh, facial issues regarding a injury that I had sustained. This time it's because I'm home for Thanksgiving <laughs> break and I literally <laughs> forgot to bring my webcam. Or not forgot, I just didn't think about it because I didn't really know if we were going to be recording a podcast. But I didn't bring my webcam home with me, so I literally do not have a camera to attach to my computer to bring you my video of my glorious face. I am so sorry. I do not know how I will ever make it up to you guys. Yeah. All of our uh, YouTube fans are just like, no. And then all of our uh, audio only fans who are listening They're on like, Spotify. I right don't now just care. Like, Get to the point. No relevance. This brings no relevance to my satisfaction and my immersion in this. What, uh, what, what, so, what does uh, bring relevance to the audio only listeners is you may also notice that I have a lower audio quality. That's because another thing that I didn't bring from my apartment was the good microphone that I usually use. So I'm currently using my headset microphone, which you may remember from the early days of the podcast. It's not great. And speaking of early days, I just want to go ahead and point out that uh, this is technically our one-year anniversary of having this podcast. Give it up, everybody. Woo! I don't know if you can hear me clapping, but I am. Yeah, uh, I think all the audio picks up is me smacking my microphone. Yeah, that, it sounds about like you're smacking the microphone, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, technically, last episode we uh, released back in no early November, that was around the time that was where we probably should have brought up the fact that it was the one-year anniversary, but uh, we just, I just forgot to uh, bring it up, and I didn't even notice. I honestly have also, been, haven't go. been keeping track of this. Also, the fact that this is the one-year anniversary means that this podcast has officially lasted a lot longer than the Who channel ever did. Yeah, and also I will also bring up and point out the fact that we've been going for one year and we still we're still at 21 subscribers. I'm not I'm not downplaying our efforts or anything. I'm just letting you know that like it's a slow progress, but we will get fans eventually. I'm I'm sure of it. <laughs> it's gonna be like two years later. We're still at the same number of subscribers. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be you know officially giving up the podcast somebody's gonna pull up this clip and be like what happened to this will <laughs> we're gonna be 80 years old we're gonna have released like 15,000 episodes still at 20 subscribers yes and it's just gonna be like someone has to subscribe eventually yes this podcast has a has a virtual cap on the number of subscribers the number of people that are allowed to watch this content <laughs> yeah uh but but let's not think about that because let's think about the fact that we could be improving i actually did do a small amount of advertising uh for the podcast i put out a post about it on one of my college's discord servers and i think like two people showed interest so <laughs> yay that's two more people interested than if you have done otherwise so yeah you know what i mean <laughs> I still need to figure out how I can advertise also, to more people than that, but I I don't know. Also, when you were talking about like your college is like possible, I thought you literally made a poster and you put it on no. a college like board. No, I made I made a post <laughs> on the Discord server. Also, speaking of college, I feel like this is something that I should bring up because uh, it's kind of a big deal, and it's not it's not one of the topics that we agreed on, but I'm gonna kind of shove it in here. Uh, at the beginning of the okay, episode. So a lot of people, if you know anything about anything related to sports and especially college football, you probably heard about Auburn's absolutely oh, yeah. what embarrassing happened? loss to New Mexico State on Saturday. Oh, and also about New Mexico State. 
Yeah, you guys, are, you guys are playing them next week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good, also, good luck is all the, I can say. The whole football department is the only reason why I'm still here and why I'm not back at home along with you. And why we haven't done the Powerade versus Gatorade special, which is probably going to get delayed until Christmas break now. Yeah. Yeah, so many things. I don't even know if I'm going to be there on Thursday for Thanksgiving because, listen, football practice throughout the entire week that I got to go film, and then I got to travel to New Mexico State on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving Day. And then Saturday is the day when uh, New Mexico, that game happens. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of the whole reason why I'm trapped here. And why I don't really have a choice but to uh, oblige, because <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about details. Um, it was, it was a train wreck of a game. If you want details, go look it up on the internet. I'm sure and, everybody's talking about it. Uh, but yeah, and if we win, let me tell you something. If uh, I thought I had Jacksonville State, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be watching. Sharon, I'm gonna, I'm but, gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be watching that game just out of curiosity because I want to see. I just want to see. And it. let me tell you something. If we win, best belief, I'm going to hold this over your head for like a okay, good while. Listen, listen. Auburn cannot be held accountable this year. They are, they are just bad. No, they absolutely should be held accountable. They are just, what are you they are just about? bad. Okay. They're, they've just not been, they've just not been playing. <laughs> they, they just straight up not been playing. They, they have all been, the people you see go out on the field are actors. The real exactly. players are just they have been. Up they have been their, putting. Uh, they have been putting eleven people on the field to go out and pretend like they are playing football. That is basically Auburn in a nutshell this season. It's all part of the grand plan. Don't worry. They're gonna have a amazing year, but they just need yeah. one year. They're gonna bring out fake people to just play the game. They're gonna they're gonna just, win the Iron Bowl. <laughs> if that happens, I'm going to jump off a building. Uh, <laughs> well, we you heard it. To, uh... You heard it, folks. We're gonna hold them to it. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I meant jump off the building of a, a three three foot building. Oh yes, that yes. exists. <laughs> He's going to jump off the top of the playground thing. <laughs> I'm going to make a whole film about it, just like, all oh, these mistakes. And then just, like, zoom out to show I'm just at a playground, and then someone from the uh, background yells, What are you doing on a playground? You're 20 years old! <laughs> and calls the cops. Calls the cops. Then you get arrested for underage playing. <laughs> Oh no! The way you phrase that, underage playing. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, wow. Actually, on, on second thought, uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, this is a family friendly podcast. Okay, let's talk about other things as I've been trying to do. We just kind of derailed. Like uh, I just, I just, that. I just wanted to vent about the fact that Auburn paid one point eight million dollars to a non-Power 5 team for them to come into our house, by the way. This was a home game and beat us up for the for $1.8 million that we paid them, not they paid us. It was... That, that, that entire game, that entire game was a complete disgrace to Auburn exactly. football and to college All football All those millions as a whole. of dollars thinking you were going to win. <laughs> But let's not get too bogged down on on you know that kind of stuff. Let's talk about. I'm not getting bogged down. No. You're the one that's getting bogged down. Uh, <laughs> okay, but yeah, uh, for the third time, I think I've said in a minute. <laughs> uh, but before we begin, uh, I first want to point out that this episode is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. No, it's not. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, first topic is uh, <clears throat> so I mentioned earlier that I was going to explain why we've been gone. For a couple of weeks um and the reason is because will it, is a coward and doesn't want to upload an episode every <laughs> week <laughs> well, you gotta call me a coward well, that sounds cowardly to you <laughs> uh but uh i don't know alabama because, uh... still has that one loss to texas staining their record 
an out of conference team. Well, you team. lost to New Mexico State, so who's the real loser here? Yeah, we also lost to like literally everyone else that wasn't Mississippi State and Vanderbilt and non conference teams. Yeah. So, but you guys have beat such teams as Ole Miss and LSU and a couple of others. I don't know. And you lost to Texas. Like, come on. Like what is Texas? Right. What is Texas even ranked right now? I don't think they are ranked. Well, what are they ranked in their conference? I meant because it's it's a uh, they're a Big Twelve team, I think. Uh, go on with your topic, while I exactly. Look this up. And what is New Mexico State? <laughs> what is New Mexico State? Oh, I'm wrong. So Texas is actually ranked number one in the Big Twelve. Um, Never mind then. Uh, moving on. So what Will was actually going to tell you guys about was uh, the fact that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fifth time, I think, at this point. <laughs> Let's move on to. <laughs> we're never going to get to the actual topics. We're always going to be. be like, I just want to point out something and then we just. It's going to be, it's gonna be another the... hour and a half episode full of I just want to point out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but let me go ahead and tell you about my, uh, past week, my past two weeks, right? Uh, yeah, but before we get to that, I just want to point out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to ignore you. Uh, so, for the past two weeks, I have been, as y'all know, I am a film student. I never show up about being a film student. Just like and, I never uh, shut up about being an Auburn student, but anyway. And one thing that we do at, every year to, uh, solidify our position as film students not that it's like super required but it's just kind of one of those things where it's like you might want to go ahead and do that is uh take part in department film now i think i may have talked about this before last year when last year's department film was happening but i would like to uh share my experience this year because uh it was nightmarish and uh i think Parts of my life have been uh, robbed in that whole thing that I'm never going to get back. There's an irreversible. Um. Ladies and gentlemen, we may have just lost. Well, the department film is oh, okay, for a movie yeah, called done. You from the Inside. What? Oh, uh, you kind of just froze up on Discord for a second. Well, I've been talking, so uh, well, is it? How much could you actually hear? Uh, something, something, department film. It took, like, a lot of your life, etc. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me, uh, run it back a bit. Um, so, the department film in question is called View from the Inside. And there's a basic movie, like, about a girl who experiences PTSD from her friend being shot right in front of her and basically goes through all the uh, stages of grief. Mm -hmm. um, at the time of recording this, I'm not actually sure if we're supposed to be giving details of the movie, but at the same time, this is... This <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna like... get in trouble with his college for <laughs> disclosing information that wasn't supposed to be public. Like, I, I don't know how much I actually care, but I'm just playing it safe. Just late. Just in case, you know what I mean? You told the people what the film was about. How dare you? I don't know. But basically, it's about that. The uh, It took about five days. It spans from a Friday to a Tuesday. And this was all before Thanksgiving break. So school was still going on. On like Fridays, Monday and Tuesday. So I had to miss those days. And uh, each day, we had to work from, like, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or some days, it'd be, like, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Basically, 12 hours each day. So, I want you to just, Stephen, I just want you to imagine, real quick, five days in a row where you had to wake up really early, like, at 6 a.m. or something, and then work all the way until 6 p.m., Five days in a row. Just imagine that. Yeah, that doesn't sound like... If that sounds like at the end of that, I would probably want to not be living anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 
on top of that, it's a very chaotic work environment where our DP, who, uh, he, he's our film professor, and uh, everyone kind of knows how uh, scatterbrained he kind of is. Um, I'm not saying he doesn't know what he's doing, so I'm not trying to discredit him, but at the same time, I will say that he was very uh, inconsistent with what he wanted from us, because I'm going to go ahead and disclose my position. I was a key grip on this movie, basically meaning that I was in charge of a group of people basically setting up stands, setting up flags, setting up a bunch of stuff for the lights to like make everything look pretty. Uh, so whenever I needed direction for what to tell my, and what to do with my other grips, I went to the DP. Now, the DP, he is someone who loves teaching to the point where he, whenever a small problem arises, he will spend the next 10 minutes going on about how this is a learning experience. Mm -hmm. You are learning lessons. Sounds like my dad. And he, would just, and he will go on and on, like basically repeating himself five times over about something that we did wrong. Like, y'all need to listen. Y'all need to take in what is happening. And what was extra annoying about it was even when we were listening, the information and the direction he gave us was a lot of times, a lot of times very unclear. And so multiple people interpreted it multiple ways. So there was never a sense of, uh, we knew exactly what we were doing. And especially for me, this was my first time being really like a grip or an electric. The film that I was previously a, uh, part of, uh, which was called Birth Soccer Academy, I was known as the audio 2. And essentially, all I did was follow the audio guy around, and uh, the audio guy didn't really teach me a whole lot. He just kind of had me, like, push a button to, like, record and push a button to stop recording. So you can imagine going from that to uh, this movie where I am in charge of a grip department that I was taught in class, but now it's my first time actually putting it into practice. And I have to be like put on a leader position to something that I've been barely accustomed to. So you can imagine how, uh, how stressful that can get. And, uh, yeah. it's it, sound just one it sounds kind of similar. Like the thing that I can most closely relate it to is like when I used to work at Publix, we did like on the job training and basically the training would consist of taking another employee that you know knew how to do the thing and basically just having the new person follow them around and just show them how to do everything and so we we would have some situations there where like you had only been doing something for like you know two weeks and you'd maybe done it like two or three times and they're like okay you're training the new guy we oh. <laughs> we had that oh what that, I was going to relate that back to back when I used to work at Wendy's when I first started out. It was very much like a, uh, like that where I had to like watch other people and basically learn everything myself just by trial and error. But I never had so bad where after two weeks of being on my own and having to learn everything myself, I had to teach a new, new person. Yeah. Like, no, After they, two weeks. yeah, it was. They had it like that at public. It may not have been in, and like it varied too. Like sometimes they would have people who had been there for a while doing it, but they would also have newer people doing teaching <clears throat> jobs. So, and also, also like, and I also relate how. Years after working at Wendy's and like being experienced, I suddenly became the experienced person to like teach new people how to do a job, and I found it extremely annoying. Uh, having to like teach them about them like obviously it's necessary you know what i mean but uh but i always dreaded when i heard hey will uh so today you're gonna be neat teaching this new person and it's just like obviously i need to do it but like at the same time i just found it super annoying because like i just wanted to do my job <laughs> i ain't getting paid to teach and yeah 
And it kind of varied from person to person, like how good of a learner they were. I remember distinctively the last person I tried to train before I headed off for college was uh, very difficult to teach. He, it, it seems like he either didn't understand what I was teaching or he was just not cut out for fast food in general. But either way, it was just kind of like, so like, it was so frustrating to me how I was trying my best to like teach him. But it, it just never registered. And, and that's when it's the most annoying. When it's just, it just seems like everything you're teaching and everything you're saying just doesn't register. So, yeah. Now, back to uh, how that relates to my experience. Like he says, very much like uh, taking someone who uh, barely knows anything about this and putting them in the uh, leadership role, just like. Uh, if if any of y'all have any questions, look to this man for answers. And it's just like, I'm often the one asking questions. So. But yeah. That's how, uh, that's essentially how my department film went. And, uh. And that's why Will hasn't been able to record a podcast for two weeks. I, to be honest, I'm going to say right now, I'm honestly surprised that he even was given, recorded one this week. Because he told me, he showed me his calendar. He told me how busy, like, his Thanksgiving week and, like, the week after Thanksgiving were going to be for him. And he was like, consider the podcast as having entered a hiatus for now. Well, okay, the first two weeks, first three weeks of November were kind of the worst ones. For Thanksgiving, outside of football practice, I really got nothing else to uh, deal with. So that's why I'm able to record podcasts right now because, you know, I just need... You know why I moved it from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m.? Why? Because, uh, get this, I needed my sleep. <laughs> I needed a nap. Because I was not wow. going to be able to do the podcast wow. unless I got my sleep. Because Look at this, my man. sleep schedule has gone... I mean, let me explain something. <laughs> my sleep schedule has gone so jacked up because of the department film. And by the way, that's not the only thing that's gone on during November and during October that has just made everything, like, feel like I've piled on so much because obviously football, like, football practice throughout the entire week that I got, like, film, and then football games where two days I'm traveling to another state and then do that. And I might have talked about this before, but the fact that I had so many football games in the middle of the week, away games that I had to miss two days of school, like uh, constant, like making up for school work and obviously school work, trying to catch up with that. It's just been a very busy semester for me. So that's why I've been taking a couple of weeks off. That's why, you know, all that. But by the time next semester rolls around, I should have a more relaxed schedule where I just have school work and then. Yeah, I, I suppose is, like, uh, I suppose your schedule is with not as not as difficult when it's not during football season yeah after football season it should be a lot m more manageable and i should be able to uh, be at the very least a little sane <laughs> as sane as you can be <laughs> as sane as i can be at this point you know uh but uh yeah that's it for that now, uh, Stephen, would you like to introduce the uh, next topic? Okay, so for our next topic, it appears that Will... Uh, so actually, in the last episode, and it, it feels like it's been so long ago, but anyway, in the last episode... Yeah, it, I think it's like three weeks ago yeah. at this point. In the last episode, we talked about the Digital Circus pilot, you know, indie animation, glitch productions and all that, and we talked about how Will yeah. didn't do the homework that he assigned himself. Uh, well, yeah. Newsflash... He finally did. So, Will, would you like to tell me... Uh, I did. Would you I like watched it yesterday on my first day of Thanksgiving break when I realized I actually had free time this nice. time around. I was like, I'm going to take this opportunity to watch all of Murder Drones because I'm aware that's like the second most popular uh, series or yeah. IPs uh, from Glitch Productions. I heard a lot of good things about it. So I watched... I don't remember how many episodes it is. It's like a pilot and then four yeah, legit they have, episodes, they I think. Have, uh, I forget how many they have so far, but they did have a pilot, and then they have like at least a few. I think they might actually be on episode six right now. 
But uh, let me let me uh, Will, would double you, check. Would you uh, like to? Would you like to tell me what you thought of the show? Yeah, I got some thoughts on it that I would like to uh, talk. Yeah, it's six episodes. Yeah, yeah, because they like just released a new one recently. So yeah, three months ago was their uh, latest episode. Um, I guess the best way to uh, talk about. Murder Jones is just kind of go by uh, first talking about the pilot and then second talking about the other episodes that came out like about a year afterwards. Yeah, because there, there's a pretty big gap for between digital the circus and... for digital circus. As far as I'm aware, they've been greenlit for several episodes. So, and also with Murder Jones, I think there is a noticeable quality improvement from the pilot to the actual episodes. So, uh, I guess what I'll say for the pilot is it introduced all the characters and it introduced this world and it was very interesting, but I had a hard, for a good portion of watching this, I had a hard time trying to distinguish the difference between the murder drones and the worker drones. I guess the reason why is because the backstory behind how the this whole situation came to be wasn't particularly, like, elaborated on yeah. they got the whole gist about how how humanity kind of fell to its last day so something like that it's okay here's something that's a little confusing for me <laughs> are there still humans yeah and, is there, there still like an earth? and i i don't know how many episodes you've seen but in uh some of the i've later, seen all of them in, i've seen okay. all six i know there's a human character i yeah, know that yeah so there but are there are that, still humans. Yeah. Uh, the the main story of the series is like um, a couple of the planets basically got blown up. So like this is set in the far future where like humans are on multiple right. planets, and so basically what right. it was is like a couple of the planets got blown up, but there I think are still other planets with humans on them. So like humans aren't extinct. It's just they a couple of planets are gone. Okay. That was you know, the no, biggest nothing, nothing major, confusion just a couple for me. Of planets. <laughs> that was the biggest confusion for me. How like each planet, like there was like several planets. Yeah. Like the impression I was under was that this was either like a separate planet or this was like still part of Earth, but like yeah. Earth was destroyed in the pilot. That was kind of my biggest uh, confusion with that, and also just. The concept of sending robots to destroy the robots. Yeah, well, like it's, it's really confusing. And for a first watch, I can understand, like, how it's confusing because even I didn't really grasp the story until I watched a film theory on it. Um, yeah, and it's I, a I will very, say... And it's a very, very complicated story that isn't told chronologically. It's told in a really weird order yeah. throughout the episodes, and you kind of have to be able to see, like clues and stuff uh to really understand it so like the your first time watching yeah, i'm just talking about from seeing the pilot this confused me as i saw each episode i managed to get a grasp on it little by little so like i now know i can now div differentiate the like between the two different type of drones like yeah. murder drones and worker drones it's all about like the murder drones have like yellow colors and then the uh, worker drones got like other colors like purple blue yeah. red although the the, uh, the lines are kind of fuzzy or start to get kind of fuzzy as we like kind of see the backstory of where the murder drones actually came from because like the exposition oh yeah when it, comes the to the, pilot, <laughs> the... when it comes to the backstories especially in episode five of like in's backstory like all of that i i barely had any clue i I barely knew like all the characters involved, like and all the uh Yeah. I think the problem was so many of the characters, like the background characters were all just like blacked out. Yeah. So you the, the blacked mean? out the blacked like... out characters were uh humans. Or they're designed to be at least. And I don't know exactly why they choose Wait, like what? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Wait, I'm, what? I'm not sure where the uh the design choice to have them be like silhouettes and stuff came from. But um, yeah, that's that's just how I, they portrayed. I thought they were just like insignificant other drones that were in the background. No, they're they, they, they were humans. Yeah, those are humans. Now those humans aren't alive anymore, uh, because it was like flashback sequence type thing. 
but yeah and i think that's also the reason why like or not not the reason but you'll notice like the one human that we do see in like the present part of the story is right. like you know space in episode and stuff. six we see a human yeah and she's got like the uh like the full face covered and everything so like you can't actually see uh what she looks like and so this theme of not showing the humans uh, or at least not showing them in detail is kind of a common theme, and I think I think the film theory episode may have like touched on why that is. Uh, I would recommend looking up uh, film if you know what film theory is. I'm sure you probably do. Matt Pat. Yeah, he did an episode yeah. on murder drones that I would definitely recommend watching because it like clears up a lot of the really confusing stuff about the show. Yeah, I'm the type of person. Here's the thing. I'm the type of person who I always don't want. Sometimes I don't want to view film things as like, I want to figure everything out by myself. I want to prove that I'm smart and I'm intellectual. <laughs> I can get this. And it's like, it's not too complicated to the point where I can't enjoy it, but it's definitely something that I think Digital Circus is an improvement on. The fact that everything in that pilot for Digital Circus, like, you, you, you get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's, some, that was that was kind of that's... that was kind of the premise of murder drones like it's supposed to be kind of like a mysterious difficult to grasp right. type thing where you really have to dig into the details to figure out what's going on yeah and that's all fine and good but personally digital circus is more my type of show you know what i mean something yeah. that's just like and honestly it's kind it, of it's... more my type as well because like i said i yeah i had to watch the film theory to really understand murder drones right and, and I mean, I like Murder Jones. Like, I really like it. Like, all six episodes, I don't need all the answers to enjoy something. It's just a little more elaboration would have helped me in that initial viewing of just trying to enjoy it. But that's just, that's kind of the consequence of having a first viewing and just going yeah. in blind. As I watch it more, I'll, I think I'll learn to appreciate each detail more so i don't even think they should really like have that be changed for this series in general because it's just kind of one of those things where it's like i may just have to come back and uh yeah watch that map hat video and like the whole thing about mystery is that it creates conversation so i'm not yeah, necessarily yeah. saying it's a bad thing <laughs> but with that said i will uh enter a <laughs> film critic mode and uh talk about something else uh in the pilot, the dialogue was definitely uh, it was definitely trying to be one of those like meta shows where they were like, I guess the example I can give is uh, the main character Uzi is like very uh, rambunctious. Well, okay, no, that's not a good term. Uh, she's very edgy and like very emo. Yeah, I guess you could call yeah. it. And uh, she's like, she like snaps at someone and leaves, and she's like, "I'm not mad at you. I'm just very hormonal." Yeah, pretty much. Like yeah, it, it was just ca that kind of self-aware humor that's been very popular recently. But I felt like in the pilot, it was a little too winking to the camera type of humor. Yeah, it I definitely, felt like it, was it very... definitely is. It definitely is a character trait that got a lot more subtle in the later episodes. Yeah. In the in the later episodes, they definitely improved on that by having it more feel more or, organic and like not so much forced. Like we need to have this meta reference in, or yeah. we need to have this character. Be... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was just like. And one thing I do like about this, uh, about this show, and one thing I feel like I'm also going to like about Digital Circus is like are the characters and like how the characters grow. Yeah, and I feel like, yeah, like, I really like the characters in this, especially uh, in, like, and it's just like, he's that type of character who's like very, uh, like, very, like, unproblematic, un, like, bad anything. He's just very innocent, mm -hmm. just like, happy go lucky, like, oh, everything's great. And it's just like those type of characters who, like, given the circumstances they're in, it's just really funny seeing them. Like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? yeah, you get it. Like, you know, there's, there's like a, it's something that's really hard to describe, but it's just like you know, characters that are acting like there's base, essentially acting like there's nothing wrong when like there's very obviously yeah. something going on, like that kind of comedy. That, that, 
Yeah, they're kind of like the uh, Patrick from SpongeBob type characters, but they're just like everything's fine. Ev or you know, you know what he reminds me of. I'm not sure if you've seen this movie before, but uh, Puss in Boots 2: The Last Wish. I have not seen it. No. There's a uh, character in there called Perito. Uh, he's like a dog character who like follows Puss around for like his adventures, and he's just like so happy go lucky, despite the fact that he has like a uh, me he has like a mess up uh, backstory. He's like, I was playing hide and seek with my owner, and he put me in a sock and put a rug on me and dropped me in a river. Mm. Oh, that silly real, little rascal! Just like. <laughs> Saying that, and everyone's just like, oh, 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 you are very, uh, I can see you've been through some things. <laughs> and he's like, ah, it was just nothing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that, that kind of character for me. Yeah. This is just super funny. Uh, but also very endearing in this show, because as much as, like, all the murder goes on and how much, like, Uzi at one point has, like, a murderous rampage in the, uh, camp episode. And it's just, like, playing this character of, like, a, uh, therapist is like, alright, so walk me through your process. <laughs> and, uh, and how does that make you Uzi. feel? <laughs> <laughs> and Uzi's like, I literally killed a bunch of people. And he's like, okay, but you complete me, so it's all good. So it's like, oh yeah, and also they've had kind of like a romance going on, which yeah, cute. And a lot it's of the pe if you notice, a lot of people in the comments are talking about the uh, Uzi and N romance thing. <laughs> yeah, the ship. I'm usually not a fan of ships, but when they're like intentional like this, it's kind of like yeah, yeah. It's for the fans, like to get interest, like. Game together, yay! It's just like, this, this raises, them, this raises like, a bit of an interesting question, though. These are obviously robots, mechanical beings. So, like, how does it work? I. <laughs> you might have to look to Matt Pat for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, how did these to robots be fair, love? Matt, I mean, Matt Pat has and Wally talks about it, so I mean Matt Pat has do done love. more sus <laughs> Matt Pat has done more sus videos in the past, so I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> how do these robots find love? That's gonna be the title of the episode. Yeah. How do these how robots, do robots find love? Find love? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Will and Steven discuss right. the implication of robot romance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, now it's everyone's favorite segment. You know what I'm talking about? The Kanye segment. The Kanye segment. If I'm reading the notes correctly, uh, apparently Kanye West is going to be making a new song. Uh, tell us more about that, Will. Alright, so, <clears throat> Kanye West is, as some of y'all may have remembered from other previous Kanye segments, or just by generally being him in the news, he's been under a lot of fire for being anti-Semitic, like, making some anti-Semitic remarks, all that. But in this new song, I'm going to paraphrase it, because the way he says it is kind of explicit, but I, basically he says, how can I be anti-semitic when I just got with this anti-semitic girl for a night <laughs> oh it's the, it's essentially the uh, equivalent of I'm not racist my sister's boyfriend is black or something like that it's just like <laughs> <laughs> try to prove you're not uh, what's the word prove you're not discriminatory just because your other significant someone you know is this uh you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. And it's just... I have... And on the one hand, it's kind of... Yeah. On the one hand, the way his phrase is kind of funny, but at the same time, it's just like, that doesn't prove you're not anti-Semitic. Yeah, it doesn't really prove but it. I'm not here to, uh... But I'm not here to, uh, just go into why he's morally wrong. Morally wrong. I'm just here to laugh at it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just at the absurdity of it. That's just kind of a weird argument. If you to make. 
Yeah. Like, I don't think like, he's being I don't, serious I don't, I don't have this right, particular like, view, because my, you know, some person that I'm related to is part of this minority, so obviously I don't have this view. It's like, that's just... Those two things, things seem unrelated to the point where like they don't really affect each other it doesn't yeah. it doesn't really act as a proof that you don't have a certain view but i don't know and, yeah I, I i get the feeling he's being like he's like joking with it but at the same time it's kanye west who knows he's 100 <laughs> yes. serious isn't this the so. same isn't kanye west the one that said something along the lines of like hitler was just misunderstood or something like that yeah in an interview yeah, he did say stuff like that. I was just like, I see good things in Hitler. Y'all just don't understand. <laughs> no, we had a Kanye segment on that. I'm sure we did. Yeah. Yeah. We, no, no, we've definitely mentioned it before. I just couldn't remember if it was Kanye or someone else. Yeah. It was Kanye. It, yeah. If you have any doubt about anything that what someone did that was really bad, you could just attribute it to Kanye. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> be Kanye right. just is going to take the blame for all of the bad things that people do. Or, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the Kanye don't, segment. Don't know who um, did it. Kanye did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all his fault. It makes sense, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so that's it for the Kanye segment. Um. So, Steven. So, Will. I have a question for you. I may or may not have an answer for you. Well, this is something we're going to discuss. Uh, yeah. Doctor's handwriting. You, you've known... You know the kind of meme or like the kind of simple joke that's made about how Doctor's handwriting are like basically ineligible to like read. Yeah, I, I've seen like, I've seen like a couple of memes about it where like, you know, it's like you get the handwriting from the doctor and it's the ner like the lower people, like the nurses or something like that, like trying to translate it basically. Yeah. <laughs> And I just, I've just thought about this because what inspired this was, uh, my biology teacher, uh, he has like a classroom that has like a bunch of TVs up and, uh, basic, basically in class we'll go over like a type of pathogen or something and he'll have like a electronic pen that he like writes over it to like take notes mm -hmm. that we're supposed to like take notes after. And it is some of the most... <laughs> horrendous handwriting i thought i had that bad handwriting but just watching him write stuff made me feel like i could do better was he writing like, was he writing in like that was he writing in like that sort of half cursive like signature style that you see people write in like when they're trying to write really fast yeah. it's just like it's kind of like cursive right, but it's not really cursive it doesn't it looks like broken letters. Yeah. Like if you took letters and you just broke them, it's like and you slapped like, them on it a looks page. Like, That's what it looked like. It looks like just imagine like people who like English is not their first language and like they're not as familiar with English and just like them trying to speak English and like sometimes yeah. it's kind of broken. It's just that as handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> they have English as a second handwriting language. <laughs> It's it's kind of like when a English person tries to write uh, Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Right, Japanese. It's basically like that. Like you're just not like it looks like you're just not used to the characters. Like you're just not used to putting letters on a piece of paper. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask, how how is it? Like, is there a particular reason why that's the case? I really Cause... don't know. It's hard <clears throat> to say. Now I have heard. And I don't know how true this is. I don't have like any kind of factual evidence to back it up. But I have heard that men typically tend to have worse handwriting than women. I don't know why that, that is, but that makes sense to me because I feel like men have like bigger hands, and so trying to fit like a uh, I know this isn't a pencil, but like <laughs> trying like fit it. I, I don't know. That's just my theory as to why. Yeah, I but, uh, like I said, I have also no... Also, you gotta consider the fact that doctors having bad handwriting stems from both men and women. Yeah. So, this must be, like, maybe how they're trained and, like, maybe, Either like... that, they, uh... or, like, maybe they just don't write a lot. Well... Because, like, you could, you, you could put it down to, like, a lack of practice. I don't know if that's necessarily the case either, because... 
even if you like <clears throat> I have to imagine that like going to medical school and like going to like all that even with everything like technologically based nowadays there's I have to imagine there's still a lot of writing to be involved maybe so and it I don't know <laughs> it's either uh, that or also like... one one other thing I've heard again not sure if this is true but it's just something I've heard is a lot of people or not a lot of people but some people die each year because of misdiagnosis from not someone being misreading the hand screen. that's gonna be so, the title of this episode will and steven are to get misdiagnosed actually no that's a that's a bad title that's not gonna be the title of this episode <laughs> it's gonna say it's just, the title of the episode is gonna be will and steven followed by a bunch of random characters <laughs> <laughs> not even just letters yeah. <laughs> there's gonna be some numbers in there just probably characters. some symbols just no, 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 not even like english or japanese characters just characters just, just like a jpeg characters. of like a character from a show <laughs> <laughs> a literal Put character the the find some i need... <laughs> i think will froze again on a in from murder we're gonna have a very stretched out photo of in okay so whatever you just said from uh about the last 10 seconds uh got cut out because you froze on discord again <laughs> you you okay. came, you came back uh, in as you were saying a stretched photo of in <laughs> That's about all I said, honestly. Like, <laughs> okay. I want that to be like the YouTube tile. <laughs> just like this find some way to like get into the YouTube database and hack it in a way where it doesn't take uh, layers or like that. It literally takes like a JPEG and forces it in this little space to like show what YouTube video you're watching. <laughs> so just the thumbnail, <clears throat> but as the title. Yeah, thumbnail as the title, basically. We're taking it quite literally. Yes. The title of this video is going to be Thumbnail. And then the thumbnail is just <laughs> going to... And then... just... We don't even list what episode it is. We just call it Thumbnail. Yes. No, the title is going to be <laughs> Thumbnail, and then the thumbnail is just going to be a picture of the word title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it it kind of reminds me... Oh, like sometimes when you, when you go through YouTube comments, you'll see like replies that say, "Don't click on my profile. Don't click on my name. Don't click on my video. Don't." But it's like a cycle of just like clicking it. H have you seen this before? I actually have no idea what you're talking about. It, it's something. It's a trend. I'm pretty sure it's died out, but I'm pretty sure you can still see this, where some. People will try to get attention, and I want people to click on the channel. So they'll name the channel, click on my name, and then they'll click on, they'll make someone click, or they'll have a profile picture that's like, click on my profile picture, and then they'll click it, and then someone out there knows what I'm talking about. I'm not <laughs> crazy, I promise. Will's not crazy, we promise. Just put up a, just put up a green screen behind Will of just like, note cards to on a on a board like a cork board just like pinned with the red string going between all of them <laughs> just put that <laughs> on a green screen behind him like i'm not crazy guys <laughs> i promise all, all the, i'm not crazy look listen it all makes sense uh you put this here and then you connect it to this and then you take this and you connect it to that and then da, 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 da. <laughs> conspiracy theorist will title the episode will becomes a conspiracy theorist after right. watching murder drones yeah i think the title was still gonna be how do robots love all caps <laughs> I, I need to make sure it's read uh, exactly like that just like how do robots love Speaking of yeah, titles, I'm I'm, I'm like <laughs> falling behind again on getting the audio episodes up on the podcast site. I need to do that. Oh yeah, that's right. I was gonna. I'm like another two. Or th I'm like another two or three episodes behind. All right. <laughs> 
Anyways, uh, our final topic. Um, so, uh, Steven. Yes, Will. Are we getting worse at English? Or is the language going to evolve soon? Because... Going to evolve. I've noticed how, especially in the digital age, uh, typos and uh, spelling things wrong has been done so much to the point where some people may register it as, like, not wrong yeah. anymore. So, like, I, in terms of, like, what it is between us getting worse at English or English getting, like, you know, just changing in general, I think it's a combination of both because grammar nowadays is, like, it's not as much of a thing. It's not as big of a deal to people as it as it was in the past. People don't care as much. These grammar about... police are out of a job now. <laughs> well, I guess yeah. you could say they, they got more of a job, but less people are taking them seriously. Because yeah. my mom, to this day, is still very much a grammar police. she uh, My mom kind of is, Let too. me know whenever I'm grammatically incorrect in saying something. Probably, probably, like, to less of an extent than your mom is, but my mom is also, like, kind of on that kind of thing. But I do think that, like, people are starting to care less and less as time goes on about having proper yeah. grammar. But at the same time, like, that would be, like, the side of us getting worse at the language. But at the same time, I also think that the language is, like, changing. Like, new words are getting added. Uh, words are getting, being given new meanings. There's becoming, like, new ways to say certain things and stuff like that. So it's kind of a combination yeah. of the two, I would say. I, I want to bring this up also about new words being invented. Have you heard? Okay, so are you aware of the fact, like after boomers and after, uh, yeah, yeah, we're Gen Z. Yeah, we're Gen Z. And then Z. the next generation is supposedly Gen Alpha. Yeah, they like are the generation after Gen Z, and. My introduction to the concept of Gen Alphas is this song that's basically a parody of a popular TikTok song right now. <laughs> and let me tell you, this one song has been stuck in my head repeatedly for the past week. I have not stopped thinking about this particular song. It's literally just... Taking out your gap for the Rizzler. <laughs> You're so skibbity. You're so phantom tax. Oh, I just no. want to be your Sigma. Let me be Ohio. <laughs> no. I've I've seen that one come up. It's like background music in YouTube shorts. And it's so yeah. bad. It's so bad. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like the uh, T-Mobile song we were bringing up. Yeah, like, it's, one of, it's one of those ones where it's like, it's so annoying and you hate it, but like you can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> like yeah. it gets stuck in your head no matter how much like, you I, hate it. Yeah. And it's like for this particular like Gen Alpha remix, I guess we call it. I almost want to love it just because of how much of a meme it is. But at the same time, yeah, it is really annoying. Just like having yeah. to see it over and over. Just like second that you get for the Rizzler. And I think it's just annoying based on just kind of what it represents. Because the thing is, it the thing of represents... it is like it's not it's not annoying. I'm not gonna say like you know. I don't, I'm not going to act all boomer and be like, oh, I don't think these new words should be getting added to the English language. It's well, like, the thing is, like, the new words are fine. The problem with the song is, like, it's just nonsense. It's just basically, like, going over just, like, random usage of all the, like, new words in kind of a, you know, kind of meme joke fashion. And it's kind of, it's more so making fun of, uh, of, like, the new words and stuff like that. But like it's just so stupid. <laughs> it's just such a stupid concept. Yeah. I think what I was gonna say was, yeah, it is kind of like stupid, and it's like just kind of seeing it being used just kind of reminds me of the fact that I'm getting older, and all the yeah. terms that I remember growing up with have just died out, and now it's just like now I'm the one like judging these kids, just yeah. like. Oh, you you use those terms like get and Rizzler? Back in my days, we were Back in my day. Noobs. <laughs> Back in my day. I've become one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm becoming old. 
Why have I done this? <laughs> no. Will, uh, this just in. Will is growing up. <laughs> no! Take me back, man. Take me back. Yeah, it's something that, like, people around our age just, like, once, once if you're, like, on the tail end of a generation, or even if you're not on the tail end of a generation, like, once the next generation starts being born and, like, growing up and becoming to the age where they, like, you know, start making new trends and stuff like that, you really yeah, see like... you really see how the older people felt and how they still feel. Like, How what? are you born in the 2010s and you're walking? That doesn't make sense! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and end this episode before I get into a midlife crisis at 20 years old. Uh, <laughs> 20 years old midlife crisis. All the points I wanted to make. Um, anything else you want to add, uh, Steven? Um, Riz, Riz, uh, Gat, Riz. And as always, please something. like and subscribe <laughs> for another episode of To Whom It May Concern. 